Welcome back for Tilly Tip Tuesday. It is prolactin week. Uh, last week we covered prolactin a little bit for women, but this week we're covering it for men. Yes. So let's talk about that, Dr. Raquel. It's so good to see you. Good to see you too. I'm glad we're all surviving. So it's good to see you. That's right, and thriving. So prolactin in men. I, you know, this is something that that we are a little bit more familiar with with women. So. You know, um, prolactin, assuming still made by the pituitary gland in a man, but how does it impact men's fertility? Yes. Yeah, so, um, exact same way um, as it kind of manifests in women, it comes from that pituitary gland, which is this very small pea sized gland at the base of your brain. Um, and so, as we talked about with women, it could lead to like loss of libido. But what is really cool with men is that a lot of men present with vision problems, which makes sense um, because this gland is at the base of your brain. So, a lot of men, um, what I was seeing online is that they come to the doctor and they're having these horrible headaches. And um, wow. along with the headaches, they're having like loss of vision. But the key giveaway um, is they um, aren't able to maintain an erection. So, they start having problems okay. in the bedroom and they kind of come together. So, not only are they having these visual manifestations is also affecting their sexual function. And that's what kind of tells doctors, okay, this might be a prolactinoma. That, you know, that's such an important point because, mm -hmm. you know, we, we hear kind of all the time from women and, and, and we hear from the brave men too, who say, you know, especially if they're, if they're presenting with ED, they're mm -hmm. so concerned and shame and a feeling shame you know, yeah. and it's a difficult thing for them to say, hey, I want to go to the doctor and talk about my ED. It's yeah. such a personal topic it is. You know, for them to know, hey, the first thing is to act about this prolactin is to take a look at what's going on your, with your pituitary gland and all your hormones, because just like women, it's a symphony, right? Absolutely. But for them to know that this could be a physical problem and to not blame themselves. Absolutely. Absolutely. To never blame yourself and to find a doctor that is willing to like take that extra step and really look into the root cause. Like if you're coming in with ED, you can't automatically refer a guy out to a therapist or marriage counseling. Sometimes it just takes doing that extra blood panel and think about how many doctors will realistically say, oh, let's add prolactin to that panel. Very few, very yeah. few. They'll add like testosterone and thyroid and things like that. But prolactin is is huge for men and for women, but it really could be the underlying cause to your erectile dysfunction. Okay, now in that case, is it too high or too low? Um, so it's too high. So whenever someone has a prolactinoma, um, their prolactin levels will come back extremely high. And so the normal range for men is going to be between two and 18. Um, and that is gonna be um, nanograms. So that's for men. Okay. Um, for women, you want it to be between 10 um, and 209. But of course, um, because we know that prolactin um, is produced in response to breast milk production, it's going to be very high in lactating women. Okay, got it. Mm -hmm. So if it's too high in men and that's really the cause, is it something that needs to be removed to treat it or could it be treated with medication to just get it lower? Yes. So um, there are common um, medications that they give for um prolactinomas, which is called bromocryptine. And so they give that to men and women. And it's a um, it's a medication that can help bring down the levels. Now, you have to get an MRI to diagnose this properly. And some doctors will decide, you know, let's just, you know, take bromocryptine, let's do a trial of this medication to bring these levels down. Um, and then if your levels can't go down, then possibly surgery, but it's, it's, it's in such a sensitive place. <laughs> That if you can yeah. bring it down just through the medication, you want to try to right. avoid like an extensive surgery. Because it's not cancer. It's you know, not when cancer. We, right. Terms like that, we think tumor, we think mass, we think cancer. And mm -hmm. so it's important to understand that, that it can be treated with medication because of that sensitivity in the area. That, that if you can bring your levels down and then, you know, still restore sort of the hormonal balance in a man's body to yeah. then proceed in a healthy sexual activity environment, then you still could um, hopefully conceive with no further treatment needed. Absolutely, absolutely. A lot of times in men and women, the success rate is very high. A lot of people, they take the medication. It was bromocryptine and it's one more um, that I can't, it's not coming to my head right now. Okay. Um, oh, there it is, um, cabergoline. It's another medication, okay. same mechanism of action of like shutting down that production of um, prolactin, but in both of them, um, they are able to restore your normal levels. So surgery is not always indicated. Okay. Now, if you only look at testosterone and the testosterone is showing too low and you don't look at the high um, 
the uh, prolactin, is it possible that men are being being overtreated with with testosterone and it's not going to work? I think for men and for women, there are so mm -hmm. many ways that doctors can not, I won't say miss the mark. That's not the right word to use, but they don't really take the time to like look into that root cause, you know? Sure. Sure. Um, and to me, that's huge. That's yeah. very, very huge, you know? Um, and so, yeah, I always recommend like finding a doctor that's willing to go that extra mile for you, you know, and really, really look into, wait, what are they presenting with? Like, tell me a little bit more about you. That's one of my favorite questions is, open-ended to say mm -hmm. like, tell mm -hmm. me about what was happening around this time. Are you having like abnormal breast pre um, breast milk production? Cause that also can yeah. happen and then they'll start to um, like produce milk um, from their from their breasts as well. So it's so many questions. Okay, right, I just knew I did not know that. Okay. Yeah, so mm -hmm. so in, in, in rare cases, men, women as well. So if women have a prolactinoma, mm -hmm. they can be like single women, not pregnant, not having sex and still be producing wow. like milk from their breasts, but it makes sense because that's okay. the function of the hormone. I see. Okay. Very mm -hmm. interesting. Wow. Just, I learned so much every time. Okay. We're on call. So <laughs> but I think that key takeaway is, is, you know, I think of, you know, more women than men watch these shows and watch these episodes. And the big takeaway is if, if this is something that you and your spouse are dealing with, or men, if you're dealing with this in your relationship, um, this is pride month. If you are in a same sex relationship and you or your partner is dealing with this, um, please access doctors and ask these questions. Yes. You know, do I need to get a prolactin panel in, in addition to looking at these other hormones, testosterone and thyroid being the common ones as Dr. Raquel so eloquently put. So our fertility tip Tuesday is ask about it. If you're presenting with ED, this could be the root cause. And Absolutely. just don't give up until you feel like you get to that root cause. That's what Dr. Raquel specializes in. If you have further questions, come see us on the Fertility Answers app, iOS and Android. Um, you can also um, download right from the fertility.medanswers.com website. Thank you, Dr. Raquel. I'll you're see you welcome. next time. Thank you. Okay, bye. Bye.